Again, lest you think that I am anti-American because nothing could be further from the truth. I thank God that my parents brought me when I was a toddler to this great country to start a new life. And I'll tell you why. If, if they had not, I don't know, number one, if I'd be alive. And if I were still alive, number two, if I would have been a born-again believer. So I owe them not just my life, but my eternal life for having the foresight to leave the Middle East and come here. And if they didn't do that, I wouldn't have been the pastor of this church. Ha! Oh. <laughs> that means somebody else would have been. Ha! Oh. <laughs> So again, I love this country. I am grateful that I was brought to this country. But I wonder, is the United States as we know it coming to an end? Is our life style as we know it coming to an end? We have no idea how far reaching this is. Some of the spin, for lack of a better word, and dialogue that I'm hearing on the news and even online is they're not sure where the floor is on this thing. I mean, right now we're at $700 billion. Try to count to just $1 billion. You'd fall asleep before you got there probably, right? I know I would. <laughs> $700 billion? That's 700,000 millions. That's a lot of money. Guess who's paying for it? Again, have a nice week. Is the United States of America going to collapse financially? You know, the scriptures seem to indicate that it needs to. Does the United States have to remove her support from Israel? It looks like according to the scriptures, especially the prophecy in Ezekiel, that we sort of have to. Well, what does that mean to you and to me? Lest there be a disconnect from what's really happening. And this is the reality of what's happening. This is our, can I say it this way, new normal, if you will. This is our new reality in the United States. I think that $2 a gallon gas, it's over. You'll never see $2 a gallon gas again. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. I don't think maybe I should be talking about gas prices as an Arab either, but <laughs> I pay the same that, that you do. I always, before my parents, when they were still alive, I used to always ask my dad, how come I couldn't have been born into Arab oil? <laughs> He didn't answer me. He just walked away. But uh, I think those days are gone. And I wonder, again, if that's not God's way of saying, I want my bride to be ready. I want my bride to be ready. Don't get too comfortable down there. I'm coming to get you. Soon and very soon. When that trumpet sounds, that shofar, when it sounds, the dead in Christ will rise first and we who are alive and remain will be caught up and we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And the Apostle Paul said, encourage each other with these words. And so I want to encourage us here today with those words. That's what we have to look forward to. Soon and very soon, and I believe it's very soon, and I think it's going to come at an hour that we don't expect it. It'll come as a thief in the night. The dead in Christ will rise first. We're going to meet them in the air. We're going to get our new bodies. That alone should bring hope to many. <laughs> Word come quickly, yes? <laughs> you heard a few amens out there. You know, I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to seeing my mom who died in Christ in the air with her new healed body. I hope to see my dad, not sure. I'm believing and hoping 
that he committed his life to Christ before, on, on his deathbed before he left this world. I know I'll see my baby Noel. Oh, I can't wait to see her new body, to see her healed body. What an encouragement. What a reunion. I can't wait. All those loved ones, for some of you who have lost parents, who have lost, you know, friends, family members who died, but in Christ, you can be encouraged. You'll see them again soon. I believe very soon. (laughs) Now, I think I'd be remiss if I were not to close our remaining time today this way. We need to occupy till he comes. There is such danger in date setting, and that's why you'll never hear me set a date. I might set a fire, (laughs) but I won't set a date. But that's okay to set a fire. But I will say this. We need to occupy until he comes. Let me share with you how I live my life. I am as ready. I have no unfinished business. All my affairs are in order. All the phone calls have been made. All the letters have been written. All all the dialogue has been spoken with all those that I so care about and love that don't know the Lord. I have no unfinished business. I am as ready for the rapture as if it were to happen today, as I would be if it's not for another 10 years from now. I'm already making plans for when my boys uh, get their driver's license. (laughs) Have the plans. Don't let the plans have you. Hold on to them like this, not like this. And that goes for everything else in this life. As it's been said, soon one life will be passed, and only that which was done for Christ will last. See, and again, that's why I believe Bible prophecy is so crucial, so vital. It has this effect on our Christian lives where it sort of by default prioritizes the cares and the affairs of this life because you look at it in the light of eternity and it's like the Apostle Paul who said, it's all rubbish, rubbish. You get that bad news. You get that email from H-E double toothpicks. You get that whatever, you fill in the blank, and it upsets you. And you let your heart be troubled. Remind yourself of what Jesus said. Let not your heart be troubled, for in my Father's house are many dwelling places, many mansions. And for those of you who were a part of that study about Jewish bridal customs and how it compares to and is even a picture of our wedding to Jesus Christ, It's interesting, the groom, after he's betrothed with the cup and the uh, bread, that's how she says, yes, I will marry you. She partakes of the cup, which is a picture of communion. She accepts the proposal. You know where he goes between the time of the betrothal and the actual wedding? He goes to his father's house to build on a room addition, bridal chamber for his bride. Oh, when's, when's the wedding? I don't know. I don't know. Only the father knows the day and the hour. What? Not even the groom? No, not even the son. The father says, it's time. The best man sounds the Shofar. You know what the groom does? He doesn't go get his bride and reserve a church and get a pastor to preside over the wedding. He goes in the middle of the night as a thief in the night and he snatches his bride away and takes her to his father's house where he had prepared a place for her, and he consummates and celebrates his marriage to her for seven days. Not eight, 